A major disaster is occurring in New York City this morning. There are indications that it may have been a Boeing 767 out of Boston. The morning of September 11, 2001, the world stopped and stared as heinous attacks of terror were broadcast live on radios and TVs around the world. I look at the TV in the corner of my office and I see the North Tower smoking. So right away, my thoughts were with my little brother. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Don Arias immediately phoned his brother, Adam, who worked in the South Tower. He's like, dude, you're not going to believe what I'm seeing here. I, I just saw somebody jump from the North Tower. These people jumping. So he says, listen, man, I got to go, got to go. And uh, as we hung up the phone, I was like, go home. And that was the last time I talked to him. Hijackers killed 2,976 people, crashing jetliners into the World Trade Center the Pentagon, and into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Five of the men accused of the attacks have been in prison for nearly two decades and have still not been brought to trial. Delay after delay has prevented 9-11 families from getting justice. Let me explain. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people, and the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Two decades later, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the alleged architect behind the attack, along with four accused Al-Qaeda conspirators, have yet to stand trial. They are charged with conspiracy, attacking civilians, intentionally causing seriously bodily injury, murder in violation of the law of war, hijacking or hazarding a vessel or aircraft, and terrorism. The five were captured between 2002 and 2003. For several years, the CIA held the men at secret black sites where some were tortured for information. I think the United States should have trusted in its legal system after 9-11, and it didn't. Meet Andy Worthington, a journalist, co-founder of the Close Guantanamo campaign, and a critic of the government's actions. It engaged in a war on terror where it tore up all the rules, domestic and international rules, laws, and treaties regarding the treatment of prisoners. The torture led to multiple political and legal fights. Over the next six years, the Supreme Court would rule against Bush's use of military commissions, which violated international rules of war. While the Military Commissions Act would allow the terror suspects to be held indefinitely at Guantanamo Bay, those terror suspects finally had their day in court. But not much more than that, as motion after motion brought the case to a standstill. Various changes in personnel also delayed the trial. Judges retired or recused themselves due to conflicts of interest. Lawyers stepped down due to health concerns and new presidents took office. Two days after President Barack Obama took office, he signed an executive order to close down Guantanamo Bay and released the so-called torture memos. He also rescinded harsh interrogation techniques that took place under the Bush administration. A few months later, Obama temporarily suspended military commissions, which delayed the trial even longer. If military tribunals are good enough for our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, they're good enough for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and people like him. Instead, Attorney General Eric Holder announced the DOJ would try the men accused in the 9-11 plot in a federal court. In a statement, Holder said, quote, Unfortunately, members of Congress have intervened and imposed restrictions blocking the administration from bringing any Guantanamo detainees to trial in the United States, which brought the case back to military court. And what's been happening since then, as uh, you know, as Obama has given way to Trump, and now we've got uh, President Biden, is that the hearings at Guantanamo have just gone round and round like a kind of Groundhog Day. The pandemic also slowed down the judicial process for nearly two years and prevented prosecutors and defense attorneys from gaining access to the remote facility. Pre-trial hearings once again resumed the week leading up to the 20-year anniversary of the attacks. It's like being emotionally waterboarded every time there is a hearing. You know, we've been emotionally waterboarded for 20 years. The trial is scheduled for 2022 in a military court. While justice won't bring Adam back. He was a wonderful guy and I miss him a lot. It may bring some type of closure for the families of 9-11. Don found out his brother led dozens of people to safety. While helping others on the ground, Adam was killed when the South Tower collapsed. All five men could face the death penalty if convicted for the attack on 9-11. Gitmo currently houses 39 prisoners of war. Many have never been charged with the crime. For the few detainees who went to trial, some of their charges were thrown out and other convictions were overturned. What are your thoughts on the process of detaining 
and try and accuse war criminals? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to rate this story using our bias meter.